is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Unscrupled covering Angel the Annoying Vampire. Season 3, episodes 5 and 6. Fredless and Billy. In these episodes, women be angry, y'all. Really? I don't know. Like, this was a very misogynistic pair of episodes. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not okay with it. Welcome to Unscrupled, y'all. So, hey there. Hey there, money. How hey you Hey there, doing? bitches. I am tired. Me too. Also, it's really hot in here. So, take off all your clothes. I already did that. Yeah. Um, moving I the, mean, moving I, I the knew, mouse but... with my balls, but it's... Yeah. It's just always surprising. Anyway, yeah. so... Do your kegels, people. <laughs> it's true. Um, so, Fredless and Billy. Let's, let's, let's start with Fredless. I was kind of hoping... That we would be done with Fred. I was too, actually. Every time I watch it, I'm a little bit more sad that Fred didn't just bail right the fuck here, girl. Yeah, just because run. she's she's almost as old as uh, Doyle was at this point. Huh. And it's like, can we just give this woman a graceful exit? Because it's like they forgot how to hire women to write about women. Yeah, the whole, oh God, I hate the way that Fred is constantly infantilized and made to be so little girlish. It's like, who the fuck do you think she is? And I don't feel like this is a realistic portrayal of trauma where she was like literally running for her life the whole time. I feel like she'd have better survival instincts. Yes. And also they make it very clear that this personality where she's the skittish little girl that's always been who she is. If yeah. you listen to her folks, it's like, or it makes toast. Fuck you. Yeah, but she hasn't changed at all from her experience, and she's just more scared. Apparently, great. I just, oh, I'm really upset with the way that I there always too. has to be a little girl woman. Why? Why can't we just be be women and stuff? And she's like on this journey to find her inner strength and maybe not not be quite as annoying as I find her to be, but. She's got no agency whatsoever. Yeah. Like, she builds the box, but she, like, doesn't really, I don't know, she uses it at the very end. When she, when she finds herself, and that she's, she's not just there to be in love with Angel. Oh, gosh, yes, okay. I'm gonna okay. Need you to it's do just me a so favor. heavy-handed. Is it never use a southern accent again? Well, never assume, never use a southern accent in place of a Texan one, because we will punch you. Well, I don't know the difference. They sound kind of similar to a western, western, western coast ear. Texas is more of a drawl. A drawl? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll work on it. So, the, the big tells are when they do thing, when, when they, when we do things like, say, amateur. <laughs> amateur. No, it's amateur. Tour. Tour like a tour. I'm taking a tour through Europe. It's not very like mature my... of you. <laughs> oh God, I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> mature? Okay, no, I I know that part. Okay, and yeah, her parents are from ancient. Texas. Yes, as is she. But she's no, she's been Californianized, kind of like I have. A bit, but she still has some of it. She's got a little twang in her drawl. Maybe the actress just doesn't know Texas. <sighs> yeah, I yeah. mean, they, but the parents do. Yes. Like, these two, I, I love them both. I don't know either of their names, but I've seen them both in a lot of roles. They're Hey, It's That Guys. Yeah, one of them was on Wheel and Grace. Like, he was... Yeah, he was Will's boss. I saw that episode. Yeah, he was... Um, yeah, he was supposed to be, like, one of the main cast. But they were like, this Texan straight dude just isn't very interesting. Yeah, so. this just doesn't work, so thanks, bye. Yeah. Anyway, um... Yeah, so this starts off with Angel and Fred going for ice cream in the sewer. No, 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 don't bury the lead. It starts with Angel coming back from seeing Buffy once he finds out she's alive. And Cordy and Wes performing what could be 
one of my top five favorite scenes in either series. Reorganizing the the weapons cabinet? No, no. The the part where Cordy's like, so it's going to be something like that. Oh, Angel, I know that I'm the Slayer and you're a vampire, but I can't stop my feelings for you. And then Wesley turns into Angel and they have this whole, like, brood off. And it was amazing. How did you, did that not even register for you? It really didn't. Oh I'm my so God, over it was this so good. Buffy Angel thing. Yeah, I know. And they made fucking fun of it. It was beautiful. I don't even want it to be made fun of anymore. Like, I want some healthy moving on <laughs> for, like, everyone involved, including the showrunner. Uh, yeah, I can't. Sorry. I don't I mean, know if you've heard of Joss Whedon and how he is about forbidden love, but it's his shtick. I don't, like, I've seen a lot of his work, and it doesn't, like, it's never been this gross. Uh, well, it was kind of gross in Firefly. It was pretty fucking gross in Firefly, actually. Uh, which, there were like six couples in Firefly. Who are we well, talking uh, about? Mal and Inara. They were the forbidden love. Oh, God. Yeah. And boy, was that fucked up and dumb and misogynist. And ah, oh, made them. He was a massive happen. misogynist. Yes, I, of course I kind of liked her for standing up to him all the time. Yeah, but I kind of hated her for thinking that was sexy. Did she? Yeah, she was totally into it. She I've was only, so in love I've with him. I've only seen it once. So. Well, I've seen it six or seven billion times, and yeah, she was all about it. Oh, my deep, my my deep self feminist heart is concerned about this ruffian who treats me bad, but it smolders so. My yeah. loins, they point at him or something. Anyway, point being, it was bullshit. It was male fantasy bullshit, mm -hmm. and it made me want to hit shit. Yeah. But pretty. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it probably was good. I was just like, oh, God, I don't want to, like... You're you're doing us the favor of not showing us this scene, and then people won't shut the fuck up about it. Well, yeah. But at the time, we could, couldn't quite shut the fuck up about it, actually. Um, but... Is there anyone from high school that you still carry a torch for? From high school? Uh, I'd have to see them now to see how good or bad it no, got, but like, maybe. No, like, nothing, yeah. not, like... Yeah, there's, there... I don't even remember who I was attracted to in high school. Oh, I do. Oh. Yeah. And I don't forget anything. No, you don't. You're... So, yeah. Crazy like that, but I, my, my crushes were all-consuming, so... Yeah. And I couldn't talk about them, so I had to think about them. Yeah. My sister's going to her 25th reunion. Yeah, why? With her beard. Nice. I can't tell you why. I'll tell you why off okay. line, but it's a it's a whole thing. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, but like my 20-year reunion or something just happened. I mean, it's been 20 years. Maybe my class just decided not to have one because they maybe had taste, but that's not my... Um, that's, that, that's not what I know about them, actually. They never had taste. So, I just... Didn't go because I thought to myself, exactly what would I get out of this? I why, also why would this be a thing? Don't. I didn't graduate, so that's probably why they haven't found me. So. Well, yeah, there is that, and I've moved literally twenty times since. Yeah. I graduated, so they'd have a hard time finding me. Um. Yeah. So I just, guys, I'm so done with this. Like, okay, <laughs> Fred, go have ice cream. Yeah, go live a normal life away from the monsters. Oh, wait, now you want to fight the monsters. Fuck. So why were they in the sewer? Did the monster attack at the ice cream place? No, they were in the sewer because it was daytime and Angel can't walk on the streets. Oh. it's Nothing is going to ruin my appetite for ice cream. Like sewer smell? Like shit. Yeah, and no, see, the thing is, sewer smell is so much worse than shit. Is it? Yeah, because you've got, like, damp and mold and fungus and everything, too. Uh, we, there used to be, like, you know, some drainage ditches and stuff that would come from sewers that we would ride our bikes through. Because, you know, mm -hmm. Ventura. And, yeah, it's, like, it's really not like excrement. It's really way more like disease. It's the smell of... Of, of horror it's it's bad guys but don't you, you don't want your mint chocolate chip down there you don't it's that, awful is mint chocolate chip yours 
No, I, I don't do mint and ice cream. I think that's appalling. It sounds like toothpaste. Yeah, it does. It looks like toothpaste, too. Right. Yeah. Point being, I want some cookie dough. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, this monster that attacks them while they're eating ice cream in the sewer, which is gross. Mm-hmm. And Angel kills the monster, but sends Fred home. And she's, like, really reluctant to leave him. And this is just... Uh... Who wrote this? A man. I'm I'm legit mad at Amy Actor for not saying this is bullshit and I refuse to do it. She wasn't getting a ton of parts at the time. This was kind of the thing that made her Amy Acker. Okay. Yeah. Because this is back in, this is like October 20, 2001. Uh-huh. Actually. So. So, yeah, there there wasn't, she, she had to take this. And she could not stand up and say, why am I talking in little girl voice all the time? Yeah. Um, so she goes back to the, uh... To the hotel. To the hotel, and then she leaves for some reason, and I forget why. Oh, she, while she was going up, she, or maybe she was up there already, but she heard her parents, and she poked her little head around and saw that they were there, and then she scurried back to her room and tried to wipe her walls off, but that wasn't working. Oh. So then she scampered off more into the night. Because she's, she's embarrassed about what a nutso she is. Well, that too, and the fact that her parents were there meant that she really was that girl one time, and mm. it made it all real, and she had to try to synthesize the trauma Fred with original recipe Fred, and it was a lot messier than she thought it would be. So rather than doing that emotional work, she tried to run from it. I'm really, really she just needs therapy. I'm really glad that none of us have uh, formal psychiatric training because I'm sure our heads would have exploded at all this bullshit. Oh, yeah. Like, if I thought about these things through those terms, it would really... Well, it's just... I'd be so mad. I'm more mad than I already am. I'm pretty pissed off. I, I, it feels so, like... Like something a really bad book character would write and think... <laughs> It feels like someone who had freshman psych wrote this because all that bullshit. I don't even, I think, she, I don't about... even think they had it that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So fine. They watched a couple. Episodes I think they of watched. Frasier. I think they watched Sybil <laughs> and decided. That... Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Because this was this was dumb, and I don't understand it. And guys, I don't like Fred. I was hoping she would die or go home or like. It's just. It's not good and we're seeing like some growth on cordy's part especially in this next episode yes although it's still not enough but um yeah like i'm liking where cordy is now Mm -hmm. i don't like a lot of the things that happened to her in the plot but like her as a character i kind that's it's believable to me you're there now yeah yeah like she is Hey, she used to be a mean girl. She used to be top of her class. She's lost all her financial resources. She's got a shitty job. She still looks good. This is how she's making it work. And she's like, she's got one thing that no one else has in this entire universe. Is she's totally real about everything. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And so parents show up and they're like, we're looking for our daughter. We haven't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got a private investigator. <laughs> oh, we couldn't help. No, he did. He's such. She, yeah, he, he said she was here. Yeah, he was great, actually. <laughs> now that you mention it. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they totally knew Fred was there and they knew something was strange, but they just wanted to find their daughter. Uh-huh. And yeah, our anti Scooby gang just goes ahead and trips their trips over themselves all over the damn city before finally realizing that, of course, she went to Caritas to see Lauren. Right. Who is not at all pleased. Lauren is depressed. So done with your shit at this yes. point. Yes. And I know you are 100% behind that. Yes. Yes. Like, I love when uh, there's a side character who's like, why are you wasting my time? Yeah. (laughs) What is the point of you? That is, like, I think my favorite line uh, from any character in any show was an American Horror Story. And I don't have, I don't want no more busted ass 70s Pro having vampires wasting my goddamn time. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So this episode was written by Mir Smith. Can we shoot him into space? Um. 
Oh my god, it's a woman. Oh god. Fine. Can we shoot her into space? Yes. Yes, we can. I'm sorry, sweetie, but your women aren't believable. To be fair, like, uh, writers have to work with what they have, and... Okay. Um, you, like, a good episode is a result of a good writer. Mm -hmm. A bad episode is often there's nothing to work with. Because... There's... That's fair. Yeah. See, the thing is... They can I, also be a bad writer, but... See, here's the problem. I actually really like this episode. Really? It's just when I think about it in its component parts, I get really upset. Mm-hmm. But I found, I found this to be delightful every time I watch it. Like, there's good physical t- comedy. Mm-hmm. Something gets hit by a bus. There, something is flung... Like, and it sets up Fred for the next episode where she's supposed to find her strength. See, the only part I legitimately liked was the uh, um, cockroach getting hit by a bus. Yeah, that was fun. Right. That was the only thing that could shock me out of, oh my god, I can't stand Fred. Yeah. And so, like, I don't, I know I'm coming into this with 2018 money who's taken feminist theory courses and reads Roxanne Gay and shit, but... Yeah. Come on, guys. Like, this is Joss Whedon, supposed to be the feminist guy in Hollywood at this point. Again, 2001. And see, okay, so then I get, when I'm circling around in my head, I get to the thing where it's like, okay, so the thing about it is we can't expect every woman that's portrayed in media to be strong, because not every woman gets to be strong in life. Right. But... I don't, I've never met a woman who was weak in this particular way. Right. Like, the, the seriously, I don't know that girl. And... Because it's, I, I feel like it's, all her weakness is showing male gazy stuff. Yeah. That, yes. Thank you. That's it. That's so I've met a lot it. of weak women who probably would act like this in some form or another, but there's nothing uh, else there's nothing other than how she would act around a strong man who she has a crush on. Mm. You get that? Yeah, we never get to see them. She's the never freaking friend. out about, like, uh, how she looks or, like, how she's going to pay the bills or it's... Yeah, she doesn't seem to be worried about, like, paying her way at all. She's kind of living on their charity Mm -hmm. and it's (laughs) that's awkward it's just like there's nothing to her that is not in service of this infant infantilized little girl that we're supposed to have a crush on yeah and that makes me feel weird yeah and she they okay so the way she they dress her she's not really allowed to be a woman um in any like they they haven't they're not trying to change her gender Mm -hmm. but they're also not showing in any way that she has secondary sex characteristics. Like there's, mm-hmm. there's no breast, there's no hip, there's no, like they're trying to show her as little girlish as possible. And that's creeping me out in a lot of ways. Thank you. Yep. I want a grown ass woman who is sexy in that way. I don't want sexy little girl. That's icky. Yeah. And it's not even an androgynous thing. It's just a, it's some Lolita bullshit. Yeah. It's this weird sexualizing by not sexualizing. Yeah, like, and and it's all in, like, the angles they shoot her in and, like, making her look vulnerable. And even when she's, like, even when they're ratcheting up her strength, they're still shooting her from an angle that makes her look little. Yeah. And, yeah, it's to like, To be fair, oh, the woman she... is tiny. Oh, yeah, she totally is. But, like, they're like, oh, she's going to go hit that bug with that. Oh, it's like a kitty. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's a kitten hitting it with his paws. It's so sweet. Oh, don't I. Um, Did you see that picture I sent you guys this morning? Yeah. What'd you do? <laughs> you saw it. Shut up. <laughs> so I sent her a picture of, like, there was, like, I swear to God, like, 12 cats. And every single one of them was licking themselves with their foot straight up in the air. All at the exact same angle. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Yes. And I want to see if we can recreate it. I don't know how. Let's I get a bunch of cats and... Put just... peanut butter on their assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could plant some catnip. Yeah, that's a thing. Because we're not allowed to have pets here, so we could, like... 
I don't want the yard cats though. They cause trouble. Let me tell you. I feel like this is this is not Boyle Heights. This is. Alhambra. I feel like we would still have trouble, and I don't want to be the cat house. Okay. I've been that. That was college, and it's over, man. Can we go sneak into someone else's yard and plot catnip, and then go visit? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so, yeah, uh, Fred eventually... God, what does she do? She she goes to see Lauren, and Lauren tells her, you should have run further, because Lauren is kind of grumpy. Yeah. And then everyone else goes to see Lauren, and they all... He stalls them for actually quite some time. Yeah, he was doing is, real well. This is where the truth comes out about um, where they're all demons. Where, uh, what's all where that? he's a demon and oh, yeah. Angel's a vampire and like I, yeah. I'm going to keep calling him Harlan and Mom because they are I didn't catch their actual names um, yeah and they're yeah. like what wait what and yeah it's just none of this had an impact on me yeah like I didn't even buy Lauren's I didn't even pick up on Lauren's depression um, I just was, thought he was bored. It was both depression and anger. Like when when he saw Gun, he's like, "Oh, hey, Gun, you good to see you. Uh, you should have brought your other friends around, you know, because they make a party." Yeah, the dude's a bitter catty queen, and I love it. To be fair, his club has been destroyed twice in as many episodes. Yeah, and you know, Gun's like, "Maybe I should wait outside," and he very politely tells him that's a fantastic plan. Right. Um, that was awesome, and. Yeah, just him just really being a backbitey catty bitch was amazeballs. That really did it for me. Okay. I love that part. Um, they also go to the library. Yeah, they go to the library. That's a big goose egg. Um, and then they find her at the bus station because that's where she has to start her new life. Right. and the By calculating pie, the little dork. And why is the uh, cockroach there? Um, the cockroach is... Chasing after Angel because it's following the trail of, of the crystal stuff because Angel cut that dude's head off. And, That's and right. so it's smelling Angel and following him around. Okay. That's why I attacked Angel first. All right. So, yeah, there's a big fight scene. Um, they, it's like, I feel like whoever choreographs these fight scenes has played a lot of D&D. Okay. Because they talk a lot. Yeah. Because talking is a free action. Right. So, like, it can't hit you when you're doing, um, talking. Huh. I, I've never played legit d and I've always played I've, other games. I've played, so I like, know. uh, I think I've played two games in my lifetime, and it never got very far, but I, I do know the trope, talking is a free action. Okay, cool. So, yeah, and then it gets killed by being run over by a bus, which was amazing, because I was so excited when I saw it was her mom in the bus. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, she drives the school bus. Good job, Ma. Although, Cordy, like, I've never been in one of those. Like, shut up. Yeah, she's, uh, it was bad throwback Cordy, but. So I didn't go to school here. Like, are they, is it a law that you have to have bus service? I don't know, because when I went to school and had to ride the bus, I was a child, and I didn't know if it was a right or an obligation, but I hated it. It was the worst. Yeah, I was, um, I lived way the fuck out in the sticks, though, so, like, it, to get the 10 miles, it would take, like, 40 minutes, so I spent, mm -hmm. and then, of course, like, I was always on the bus that didn't leave until an hour after school. Yeah. So, like, I spent a lot of time on the bus, and I realized, like, they just... Like, they're required to go to every every school. I learned that. Mm -hmm. Pick that up at some point. Yeah. So, yeah. My, I, I don't have any idea how long the bus ride was, but I know it felt like 12 years. Yeah. Every day. I got a lot of reading done. I'd read until I was nauseous, but only if most of the kids were already off the bus, because if I let my attention down for a minute, they'd hurt me. Yeah. So, yeah. I sort of had that problem, too, but it's like, like my... Prison? My bus was, like, empty enough that, because, like, I live so far out, there aren't that many people along right. the route. So, I, like, I was on the last, second yeah. to last stop. So, yeah. After the first, like, two or three stops, generally, I could have some peace. Yeah. So, yeah, school is, kids are terrible. Yeah, kids are the worst. I'm not having any. Right. I'm not yeah. either. Mm -hmm. Also, the, we're all going to be dead before they grow up anyway, so. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the globe is warming and, and we have 12 years to, like, 
literally stop capitalism and we can save ourselves. That's what it's going to take. Well, that's dark. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, do I just stop buying stuff? Like, how do I do this? There's nothing you can do about it. It's Fuck. the uh, It's 100 corporations that we need to stop doing their shit. Like, there is no amount of individual action that can solve this problem. We'll talk later. Anyway, so, back to Buffy. Yeah. Um... For Fred and parents and everybody goes back to the hotel. And, and Fred there's... decides she's going home. Yeah, she is. Which is the right decision. Yeah, there's no place for you here, bitch. Yeah, you don't you're... need a physicist. We're fine. You're useless. You're useless. Uh, you don't make any sense. And also your parents miss you. Go see your parents. Yeah, you're really a liability because every time we turn around, you need saving. Yep. Get the fuck out. So, um... Yeah, and then she has an epiphany because this... Because uh, some goo grew into crystals on her sweater. Right. And Angel has been carting that stupid head around. Well, you know, it is a mighty good trophy. Right. Yeah. Um, That's really gross. Like, that is gross. Does he usually bring back piece, pieces of his kills? Is he a kitty? I don't, like... Was, he, was Wesley intending to uh, vivisect it so he could... Like, see what was up? Or... I think Angel wanted to mount it on something, because he's that kind of gross bastard. I know. Like, guys, mounting heads is bad. Yeah, don't do that. It's weird and not okay. There's nothing charming about it at all. Yep. Yeah, just uh, hunting I don't trophies. even do it in Skyrim. I just... I uh, If I'm pretending to be an evil bastard, I do it in a video game, but, like, if I'm just me... No, it's wrong. It's morally wrong. Just stop doing it. It's I, gross. Even morally, Icky. it's like, I want the stuffed remains of a dead thing here. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and they look at you, man. They look at you with their haunted dead eyes. Mm hmm So, um, yeah, and she comes back, and yes. the box, uh, is a spring-loaded axe. Yeah. It's it's a spring loaded axe. She she steps on it. It works perfectly without testing the first time. On also, the she doesn't have to aim it. She doesn't aim it. She just sets it down on the perfect trajectory to pop open the head and not kill the live vermin within. Right. Yeah. Good job, Fred. I hate you. Um. And, and then she decides to stay. Yeah. And the day is saved. All the bug people go away because, you know, they don't need vengeance for their fallen brethren or anything. They no. just want these kids. It's more important is the eggs. So. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're alive now. They're no longer in the larval state. But yeah, so they're just going to take them and skedaddle, not even leave a drone there to like kill everyone. Right. So that's fine. And, and Fred has her little epiphany that she needs to stay here and make not toasters or some shit. I don't yep. care. Yeah, Fuck. so, yeah, I, I'm really glad you enjoyed this episode, because I was really... Bored. Like, I was bored and grossed out, and... Yeah. And, like, I don't want to look at cockroaches. Yeah, me neither. I'm I not have a fan. A, I normally have a strong, strong stomach, but cockroaches is just one of those things that, like, ugh. Everyone has their Achilles heel. Oh, that one is nowhere near it. Like, but that's but, that's like, one of the ones I'm like, feelings. ugh. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so... That was Fredless, where we are still not Fredless. Not yet, or ever, maybe. Who's to say? God damn it, Fred! So, yes, now we get to... Billy. Billy. <laughs> Ike. This was a dark episode. Yeah. Which I'm not opposed to. Mm -hmm. Um, But I really wish Billy was better cast. Yeah, it's a really strong part, and they got um, a guy who just doesn't make me believe it. Although, I mean, first time I saw this, I thought he was creepy as fuck. So I wanted to I, punch I think it was him, good but... You're supposed to want to punch him. It's also, like, I'm not intimidated by him at all. It's not out of, like... Well, he's not supposed to scare you. Sure. <laughs> Whatever. So, Billy is the name of the man we sprung from the Endless Hell prison. Yeah. With Which skin. was like four episodes ago. Yeah. So apparently he's been sitting in Lila's office this whole time. No, he went home, but he went to see Lila because he wanted to fuck with people. And she's, uh, you know, he's a man who hates women. Yep. Yeah. And he brings that out in other men, which is like 
horrifying on every so level. So really specific mutant power. Yeah, that's why he has to use it to fuck with people. Like, right. It's not like something that's going to lead him to fame and fortune. And we have another... Uh, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying real hard to see Gavin as an asshole. And he does a bang-up job this time, but he's still, like... He's just a I'm lawyer. also re-watching Lost, along with our Unspoiled Lost coverage. And he's, like, he's so good in that. And I love him. So... Mm -hmm. Hey, Money. You want to go and see that Stevie Nicks drag cover band this weekend? I can't, bitches. That is a very specific event, and it sounds tailor-made to just you and me, but I gotta do some shopping this weekend. Shopping? You have subscription services for everything. You get your food, your clothes, your underwear, and your dildos in a box every month. What else could you possibly need? I... I just finished Harry Potter a couple of months ago, so now I need some Harry Potter-themed stuff, and I want to decorate my man cave with some suitably dorky accoutrement, but I don't want to support some fucking child labor or NBC Universal Shineheart. So that means I gotta go on eBay and Etsy for a whole fucking day to find the stuff made by people who actually like this stuff instead of this franchise brand-managed horseshit. Oh, dude, I've got the thing for you. You need AccioBox. I'm not going to say that, because that's going to summon the litter box to my hands, and that is gross. No, 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 no. Accubox.com. Every month you get handmade, hand-curated Potter swag made by fans for fans out of love. Really? Actually, I don't have a pithy comeback to that. That sounds pretty cool. What do I get? Oh, you get three to five quality handmade items for just $39.99 a month. $39.99 a month? I spend more than that on conditioner. Yeah, you do, you vain son of a bitch. So, after you're done washing your fucking hair, head on over to AccioBox.com. That's A-C-C-I-O Box.com. And use the promo code UNSPOILED to get 10% off your order, you cheap bastard. Well, alright, where can I look at this stuff before I actually throw down my credit card numbers? Check out their Instagram at the Accio Box and on Facebook. All right, all right, I'm sold. Prep the flu network. I'm coming down this weekend. AccioBox.com. Magic delivered. Well, the, here's the thing about Gavin that that I always got from it. He's not evil enough to be in Wolfram and a Heart. He's just regular lawyer evil. I don't. <laughs> I don't see him as regular loyal uh, uh, lawyer evil. I see him as regular male evil because he the the way he condescends to Lila mm -hmm. and the way that she like he frustrates her so much that she's just like go do something in escrow because she's just like fuck off get out of my office yeah you and pointless this thing. is why I like Lila is she's not putting up with this expulsion and she knows exactly what it is and of course he's doing the kind of the Brett Kavanaugh thing. No, I was just... Uh, uh, fuck yeah. you. Yes. Fuck you, Gavin. Indubitably. Yep. So, yeah. And then uh, Gavin beats the crap out of her for, like, no reason. And yeah. you're meant to wonder, the fuck? <laughs> I actually, like, I, I did not think anything was happening. Like, it zoomed in on Billy and he was smiling. And I'm like, wait, why are you smiling? Because I legitimately thought that she had just gotten under Gavin's skin and he reacted like an asshole man would. Ah, uh, so for you, there didn't have to be anything mystical for that to be, like, a normal thing. Yeah. Yeah, I... I yeah. It was odd to me that there was something mystical there because, like, I, I totally believe that Gavin was capable of it. Yeah. And the thing is, maybe Gavin is. Maybe that's why it didn't seem to take very long. <laughs> I mean, like, Gavin is exactly the passive-aggressive kind of asshole who I think beats his wife. And then cries about it, so yes. she has to comfort him. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, a lot of abusers do it that way, so. Well, yeah. It's not exactly original. I never said he was original. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, so Billy is the nephew of a senator. Yeah, and the way they talk about these, this family dynasty of politicians, it makes you think, okay, the Kennedys. This is like... This is Ted Kennedy's kid or something, right? Yeah. And, yeah. So, I'm trying to think of another um, dynasty. The Bushes. And the Bushes are very recent, though. That's why I'm saying the Kennedys. 
Yeah, I, yeah. The Kennedys or the Rothschilds are the only two options. So, and I've never heard of the Rothschilds. <laughs> okay, so it's the Kennedys. Just saying. <laughs> sure. The closest this country has to royalty, what, they call it their house Camelot. For what we, it, it, yeah, but that that senator was very East Coast. So, yeah, it was Kennedy. Yes. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, Billy. Uh, they're they're all very concerned about Billy, and they seem to want him around. They don't seem to want him to be in the hell prison, but the cousins kind of don't want him around. At uh, all, yeah, ever. I'm wondering who pulled this string because it sounds like Billy is a liability. Yeah, like like no, it the family doesn't actually want him. In their lives, he's a big problem. So yeah. Who exactly hired Wolf and Bernhardt to get him out? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's got, like, a dad maybe or a mom or something. Yeah, possibly, like, perhaps this de- this power developed later in life. Maybe. And, like, they liked him at one point. Or maybe, like, maybe the senator uncle guy does like him like this and wants to use him as a weapon of some kind. Okay. Because that would be a thing. Man. Yeah, that would be a thing. Especially as a politician, you need to discredit your uh, the person running against you. Mm. Send Billy over to touch him and beat the crap out of some woman. Then, you know, bada bing. End of political I can see career. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, so that's what I'm going with. That's my new headcanon. Sure thing. Thanks, guys. So, yeah. Um, but. So he, like. There's, how did they, uh, we, we do, I do want to talk about like something I'm really glad to see happening and that's Cordelia, um, training. Yeah. Which. It's about goddamn time. Right. I don't know why she's training with Angel. Because, um, he's their best fighter. I feel like Wesley has been trained to train, so. I feel like Wesley sucks at a lot of stuff. Okay. And Cordy doesn't always feel super comfy around Wesley in the way that she feels comfy around Angel. Okay. They spend a lot more time together. I can see that. Yeah. So, yeah, Cordy is learning to handle herself, and I'm kind of really... It's really overdue, and... God, it would be so cool if Cordy was the next Slayer. No. She cannot handle that kind of power. (laughs) I I feel like uh, Cordy would be thrilled that she gets to do what she does... And this is her life's purpose, because, I don't know, she seems... Of all the characters, she's the most cast adrift. I don't think so. I think Cordy knows that if, like, everyone else in the office just died tomorrow, she could just go back to acting. Okay. Because that's still what she wants in her heart of hearts. Right. She's getting a little old, though. It's been two years, man. I know. She's 20. She's 20, yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's absolute we death live for here. a starlet. <laughs> it, it is absolute death for a starlet, guys. Like, you, I, need to I, have I, a, you need to have a pretty good IMDb page by the time you're 21, so. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it's entirely possible that her star is never going to rise, and maybe that's okay, because you know what? L.A. is built on Shattered Dreams. Yes. Yep. The ghosts of shattered dreams is what makes the earth shake. I was going somewhere with that. But I, I yeah, care. it fell apart. I lost track. Let's move on. Um, yeah, so Cordy is also... I don't know if I buy the guilt thing either. Uh, I do to a point. But she, she, does, she does get a vision of a man killing his wife, but that happened a week ago. Yeah, and she's like, the fuck, Visions? Why are you doing this? I can't help him. Are you punishing me? You're punishing me. Mm-hmm. Do I deserve it? I might deserve it. Oh, no! Yeah. Um. So, yeah, she's... Uh, they managed to piece together that this is Billy's work. Yep. Uh, Angel goes to visit Lila. Like you do. And he can't come in, but man, does Lila's face look bad. Yeah. Yeah, she 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 got all of some of that. So, there's one thing she said that I really hope played out. What? You should see the other guy. <gasps> I'm really hoping she beat the shit out of Gavin right back. If anyone could, it be her. Yeah. Cause, yeah, I hope she got her licks in and it's not just, like, security beat the crap out of her. I want her to have hurt him back. Yeah. Um, so maybe he's dead. 
Maybe it'll be his head mounted on her wall next. Who's to say? You can mount Gavin's head. I'm totally okay with that, Lila. Well, yeah, I mean, only animals are... are, are yeah, he's sub-animal. He's right. like a slime mold. Um, so, yeah, like, they piece together that it's Billy. They trace him to, like, why was he getting arrested? Oh, okay, so... First, he went to his cousin to get some money, and then Angel went to the cousin and found out stuff about him. Right. And, and none. And this cousin does not like him around. Right. No one like like none of that generation. They're like, no, we know the rules. I'm going to tell you about them because like it's no this fuck this shit with my cousin. Mm-hmm. And then so Angel goes to Billy's place where you know the cousin apparently tipped him off he'd be and breaks in to confront him and uh-huh. he can walk right in because Billy's not human. Right. So. uh home rights don't apply to him or something. Anyway, and then the cops come to arrest Billy because Billy had phoned in a tip saying where one of the dead women was. Okay. Okay. Yeah, now I remember And they're like, how the fuck do you know that, motherfucker? Yeah. And on the ride to the station, he touches the officer dude. Oh, wait. The officer dude touches him while he's being cuffed. Right. Now now I know where we are. Yeah, and he turns him against his partner. Right. Yeah. Which was really hard to watch. Yeah, that was fucked up and it was chilling the first time and it was still chilling now right it's they did a real good job of making you afraid of men yeah in this episode like i mean this all men every man yeah men are terrible get away from me this room's so small <laughs> like, uh yeah you're in a you're in a locked room with a man so yeah but you're like angel you put that part of you away a long time ago yeah yeah. So, it's, like, it's too much to hold on to. It's a lot, guys. So, um, yeah, like, once you wake up, like, there is, I, I remember still having feelings like that. Mm-hmm. And they were sort of unfocused during puberty because you're mad at everything and you don't yeah. know why. Mm-hmm. But then I fucking grew out of it. You know why? Because I saw women as people and I'm like... Okay, so she's slutty. So what? <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> I'm slutty and it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, there's a thing that you don't want anything from women, so you don't see them as denying you anything. That's they fair. can just be people. Okay. Yeah. I don't get this way with men who turn me down, though. Yeah, that's just heterosexual dudes being dicks. Um, but also, like, no one ever told you your whole life that the world owed you. Men. That's right. Like it's a, I wasn't picked on for not having fucked a man. Yeah. So exactly. And I get it. Okay. And no one. And you were taught that men don't owe you sex. Right. That's not a thing. No, there's been no media blitz telling you that you deserve to be issued a dude. Okay. Yeah. Issued a dude. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, thank you so much for showing up on your natal day. Here is your perfect dude that we're just going to hand you that you can, you know, fuck and ignore and we'll make you dinner. And See, and the perfect home. dude for me would be a shapeshifter because I get bored easy. It's true. You yeah. do. So, um, yeah. I like variety, guys. Um, so, oh. where the fuck were we? I had to yawn oh, the, because um, I'm tired. Yeah, but, it's it's so, late, guys, and it's Sunday. Yeah, Billy escapes, and he's, like, wandering the city, being an asshole. Mm-hmm. And uh, I forget how we figure out that he's going to the airport. Oh, somehow um, Cordy his does. cousin told us. Okay. So, yeah, Angel but tells Cordy, Cordy, and Cordy runs off to confront him. Right, but Cordy also ha- pays a visit to Lila. Yeah, okay, maybe that's where she finds But, yeah. Cordy pays a visit to Lila, but all of this leaves Fred alone in the hotel. Oh, yes. Yes. Where Wesley slowly goes over the edge. Because he touched Billy's blood. Right. Don't touch blood. Yeah, don't... Yeah, you don't know where it's been, man. It could be all kinds of infected and shit. You don't, yeah. Do you have so, any microabrasions on your, your skin? Just don't touch blood. Jesus. So I'm like... <sighs> The way it goes down with Angel, where he's like, I buried those feelings a long time ago, um, makes me feel like this is activating something that is already in you, right? Yeah. But 
A primal misogyny. The fact that both Wesley and Gunn went straight for insulting her intelligence. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like something either of them would have buried in there. I think that it's just the easiest thing to okay. say. Okay. Because when, when I'm angry, I want to call something stupid. Right. Yeah. So, okay. And, yeah, it it, it does hit something primal that's, that's there, apparently buried in all men. But it's something that dudes don't like to talk, talk about or think about. If they don't have to, they want to just be fixed already. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of rough to work through. And Angel's had a lot more years to do that. I honestly think he probably worked through it when he was a vampire because deal- dealing with Darla, <laughs> like seriously. Oh, yeah. He got a lot of shit to work through. I feel like dealing with Drusilla. Yeah. Between the two of them, yeah. you got you to gotta get woke or something or you're going to lose your sh- fucking mind. Anyway, so. Also, Darla should be popping right about now. I got nothing. So how about we talk about that scene with Cordy and Lila, and then we'll go on to the shining moment in, uh, that is Wesley Gunn and Fred at the hotel. Okay. So, uh, Cordy kind of confronts Lila about being a vicious bitch. And like, this is not vicious. Sorry guys, my alarm was going off. So, I actually really love this scene. Really? Yeah, because they, because Cordy gets to be original Cordy again. Mm -hmm. She gets to talk about how she was a vicious bitch and how she was Lila in better shoes and they have a bitch off and then they have a shoe off and it's just like, yeah, that's the Cordy I know. Yeah, and this is a connection I believe. Like, I don't buy Lila being sexually attracted to Angel. If do buy these two having an amicable uh, frenemy chemistry. Yeah. yeah, like if they weren't on opposite sides, I feel like they'd be besties, but kind of like those mean besties. I feel like Lila would give her a job. Yeah, and Cordy would be really good at it, and yeah. then Cordy would get Lila fired and take her position, and then they'd like they'd have this frenemy thing going on where they were all vying all the time. It would be mm-hmm. kind of beautiful. Yeah, and maybe they'd hate fuck. That's just my head cannon, guys. Never mind. Do you need a sponge? I might. <laughs> so yeah, they they have this great back and forth, and it it just really it, it was everything I want in Cordy. Yeah, that, and it, this it was is so good. this is the this is the Cordy Redemption episode. Yep. Where like this is the Cordy that ran over the vampires with the car, and I keep bringing it back to that, but like that's the defining moment for me in her development. That's is, fair. Yeah. Yeah. So, like. I I thought this entire time she was being set up to be eaten in the f- finale of the first episode of the first season. Yeah. But that's not what happened. It's like, no, she turned around and, you know, became a valuable member of the team while also not liking the other members of the team. And that's something we don't get enough of. Exactly. Yeah. So she got read in, but it doesn't mean she bought Buffy's bullshit. Yeah, she never drank the Kool-Aid. She just did it because mm-hmm. it's what she was doing then. Exactly. So, um, also, God, she looks good. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, I'm really feeling her new haircut. Like, it makes her look 10 years older, but in a good way. You know? Yeah. In, in a way that makes me feel less bad about sexualizing her every yeah. time she's on screen. That's fair. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. yeah. So, like, let's be fair. Like, she is in her 30s, so. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, she is. 100%. Um, yeah, so, uh, this was, this was really good, and I liked it, and, uh, yeah, I want to see more shit like this. Okay, so now let's talk about the chasing of Fred through the house while verbally abusing her. Um... Yeah. And also Gun coming to the rescue and then needing to be knocked on the edges. Yeah, there's just a lot going on here, guys, and it feels horrible. All of it is... It, the entire series of scenes feels slimy and gross and alone and... Yeah, and it's it's not something that either of them could really recover from. 
as far as their relationship with Fred goes? Well, I think I think it will mean a lot ultimately, ultimately that Gunn's first thought is, knock me unconscious. Uh-huh. Like, seriously, do grievous bodily harm to me rather than hurt you. Okay. And, yeah, she could be afraid when she saw the thing take him, take him over, but she got to watch it take him over. She, right. It's not like he switched when her back was turned. So mm-hmm. there's going to be less fear there. Right. Also, this, um, this show does not understand head trauma. No, no. <laughs> it was all the wrong places to knock that guy unconscious. Right. It, well, you don't want to knock someone unconscious if you care about them because it's a bad thing to do. Well, she didn't have time to tie him up. Yeah. And, and also, like, probably not going to work. Just piss him off, and he'll just die later. <laughs> yeah, with a cracked skull. Yeah, Awkward. concussions are not good. Yeah, but I feel like these scenes can be summed up by what we've said, and also, just picture the shining only with, you know, a little mousetrap element at the end, and that's what you got. Yeah, this is it. This, it was trying to evoke the shining. And Although, like, I was never scared by The Shining. Maybe it was because I didn't see it till I was a teenager, but it was also, I don't know. I just felt bad for the actors. Yeah. And Stanley Kubrick can fuck off in hell. I hope he's in Billy's fire pit. Okay. Because, like, he made he made poor Shelley Duvall do that take. Like, he's, he was famous for this, especially with women. Like, he would make them do hundreds of takes until they were so broken down. Ah. Uh, he was nothing. like, but it's not real enough and i'm like fuck you <laughs> yeah you don't have to traumatize the bitch to, it's acting you son of a goddamn. also why do you get any credit for that she's the one who did it exactly so yeah um yeah guys if you've listened to us for any length of time you know that i'm gonna i'm gonna hate on some directors at some point so yeah usually men usually yeah. But yeah, so they they do all that and Fred gets to triumph in the end because apparently the misogyny made Wesley forget that she builds things. And she's safe and sound all on her own. Good job, Fred. Yep. I'm so proud of you. But then comes one of the more, more satisfying scenes, uh, again, in the entire show for me. I, just... I found it super unsatisfying because... I don't know why Cordy didn't pull the trigger the second she had the opportunity. Drama. And there's this, it's this trope that was really big at the time that taking a life changes you as a person. Xena did it. Buffy did it. It was the thing where they were trying to instill in people that the idea that taking a life is crossing a line. And maybe it is, but all of these Fucking characters that haven't taken a life have all this angst about it. And I feel like it would be a welcome change. For Cordy to just go cold? Yeah. And just do it? Yeah. I, I, this, is a, this is a step in the maturation process, and she's dealing with a lot of shitty people. And also, he's not human. She's killed demons before. Yeah. This true. But he looks human. So? And it's harder to kill things that look like you. I don't think it would have been. Like, she's... This was more about her. This was about her having satisfaction of talking him down than it was about her having any trepidation about pulling that fucking trigger. There's that, but honestly, I think it was. I think she wasn't ready. I think this was part of them trying to show that she's not Cold Stone Cordelia anymore. She's got a soft, gooey inner center that like likes things and blah 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 blah. And that's why they had Lila do the killing, because she is cold stone inside. She doesn't have any humanity left, so that she, so she can do it, and it's fine. Now keep that keep in mind that men can kill indiscriminately and still have their their sweet humanity intact, which is why Angel wanted to gallantly step in and kill Billy for Cordelia, so she wouldn't be tainted by this. This terrible burden that only men can carry. But Lila is a masculine woman. I'm getting into way too much gender theory here, but this is so weird. But I really liked that Lila gunned the motherfucker down. I mean, I did not like it. I just, like, I felt like it's time for Cordy to level up a bit. Yeah, I do too. Um, That was a classic rant, people. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Also, her unique uh, 
pronunciation of gallant. Gallant. Yes. It's the, it, it, it's it's the fancy way of saying it. Uh huh. That like target is target and lady gaga. That is, is not the fancy way of saying it. That is the soccer mom way of saying it. Okay, but lady gaga is lady gaga. Yeah. Okay. I just, the I've, the only person I've ever heard say it that way is uh, Rachel Dratch. So I don't know who that is. She played she played like all the the bit parts on Thirty Rock. She, like she, oh her yeah. she was fun. <laughs> uh, okay, so Lila guns him down and everyone goes home happy. Yeah. Question mark. Um, she sends like yeah. I don't know like what price lila is going to pay for that but i mean she does have plausible deniability both cordy and angel were there yeah i i missed them twice and accidentally hit billy damn this this whole eye is swollen shut i how could i possibly she could just ditch the gun and say it was she was never there yeah i mean they they don't have to know the senior partners but i also like they they spent all this money on extricating him and now he's dead yeah. So does that do that? Are they going to try and extricate him from hell again? Violence is senseless. He hasn't got a body to go back to. They, I don't think they can pull him out of hell again. Okay. So that that's that's my head cannon. I feel like um, Angel owes Slim a couple beers and a burger. Slim? You mean Skip? Oh, Skip. Yeah. Yeah, totally does. Well, he, remember, we knew Skip was on the side of good from the start. Right. They said he was aligned with the powers. That's... Right. I feel like you should go back to hell and say, like, hey, I'm sorry. This is how it went down. For For the record, everything is, uh, he, everything is back in place. The man is dead. Like, can I buy you a beer? And Skip's going to be like, how many people did he hurt before you put him down? And he's going to be like, that's fair. Yeah. But... How many women are dead? But Skip also, angels? Skip also knows that uh, he's on, Angel's on the side of good. So I feel like Skip would be like, well, you did the right thing eventually. So The thing is, Skip's lawful good and Angel's like neutral good-ish sometimes. So yeah, Skip's going to actually want to hold him accountable <laughs> in, in, in my head canon. I don't know. I don't like. I don't feel that's who Skip is. That's not what I got from him. Okay. Like, because I I feel like if he was that lawful good, like you're saying, the moment Angel opened it, like there would have been no respect there. Oh, that's fair. Oh. Sorry, so, guys. It's been a hectic weekend. Yes, it has. Um, and I'm super hungry. So yeah. Um, I want to see more of this, Cordy. Yeah. Uh, but what really pissed me off is the scene where. Fred is at Angel at not Angel at Wesley's place mm-hmm. saying that he needs to forgive himself. Like, no. Yeah. No. I don't like this women who've been abused then comforting their abusers. And I know that's not what they're going for. Like he really was a victim of some kind of weird ass magic, but it's not her job to comfort him. Yeah, and the thing where she's suddenly just unafraid of him doesn't scam for me. Right. Like I don't know about you guys, but when people I've trusted have turned on me in a violent manner that was scary and then told me that they were just off their meds or something, I can't relax around them for a really long time, even when I know pretty sure they're safe. It's just not... You're, we're humans. We're wired for survival. You can't turn off the fight or flight thing. Just because it was a magic spell. Right. She's going to be weird around him for a long time. Okay. So, yeah, these episodes were a lot to process. And so much like, to process. There was good stuff in it, but, like, there's also a lot of running up against some very sexist walls. Yeah, but, again, 17 years ago, this is cutting-edge stuff. We weren't even talking about this crap. So, I was glad that they brought it out so that we could discuss. Because y- okay. we didn't talk about... The random wild urge to hit women before, like, at, with the like at this time that that wasn't something we we talked about on television. On te- I'm glad you added that qualifier on television because I was like, when I discovered Kimberly Williams Crenshaw in 2004, I was like, yes, finally. Anyway, um, go read her, guys. She's amazing. So, how about some new patrons? Shall we do that? Yeah. 
All right, y'all. It's been some time since we recorded, so there's a little more uh, new patrons than uh, we usually have. We got Valerie Knight, Claire Joyce, Marta, Carrie DeWalt, Allison White, Deanna Pyle, Mia Wilson, Muna Jabril, and Julia Shumway. So, thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate you guys helping us out, helping us pay for web storage and shit. Um, make sure you've signed up on the Facebook page. And for those of you who are not patrons and are getting really sick of me recycling the same seven commercials over and over and over again, you don't have to listen to that if you become a patron at patreon.com slash unspoiled, where you can also get cool shit like uh, Unsobered, where Natasha and Roshan just get incredibly drunk and... Talk about stuff. Yes, talk about weddings and being sick and shoes and, <laughs> like, whatever. Yeah, all so, that jazz. Also, like, if you want to have a podcast on something that you, like, really like but isn't that popular, you can commission Natasha to do so. Yeah. So that's called Spoil Me. You should check that out. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, it's hot. We're hungry. Uh, we will be back here in a couple of days with a... With, um... Are you going to tell me anything about this episode? I like, can tell you the title of the next Buffy episode. I think I've seen it. The, the guys, strap in, because the title of the next Buffy episode we're going to be doing a podcast on is Once More with Feeling. Okay. It's beautiful. Just trust me. I, I, I'm trusting you. You're going to be so mad. Anyway, so that's our show, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, this is going to air about a month before LostCon happens. If you're in the L.A. area, come on down Thanksgiving weekend to LostCon. I'm going to be there running the show. Natasha's going to be there. She's going to be on panels. Money will probably be there. Uh, there I may, will be there. There may be a podcast in, in, in there. We I don't think it's been decided what the topic no, is No, we still need to talk about it, but I'm like... I'm, it could happen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like, maybe we'll do something off brand and just, like, ha- answer questions. Yeah, it could be a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, come on down and see us all. It's a heck of a good time. All right. So, uh, bye. Bye. Spoiled Network Podcast.